10 months ago, I gave you my opinion on nine white rums and the Ron Kube Carta Blanca really blew me away. It made me fall in love with the daiquiri. Before, I quite liked the cocktail, but now I absolutely love it. But now, my palate has changed and I've got even more white rums. Currently 25 of them to be exact. So I don't actually know whether this is still my favorite. So in this mini series of three or four videos, I'm gonna give you my updated views on my favorite white rum daiquiri, which then of course, knowing me, will probably get updated again in another few months when I've got even more white rums. Hey rum fans, my name's Steve the Barman and I'm here to help you on your rum journey by mainly focusing on rums under 50 pounds. Now I know to a lot of you, when it comes to mixing rums, I know the humble rum and coke is gonna be a lot of your go-tos. But I promise you, mixing up a daiquiri is a whole new ball game. It's so, so good. Now the daiquiri is one of the easiest cocktails you'll ever make. It's just a simple blend of rum, lime and sugar. But getting the ratio right for your palate is the key because there's a huge difference between a 4-2-1 daiquiri and a 4-2-2 or even more what I'm on these days, which is a 5-2-1 and a half. And just a note, when we talk about daiquiri ratios, it's always rum lime sugar. So a four to one would be four parts rum, two parts lime, one part sugar. So finding your perfect ratio and your perfect rum is like your front door key because only that one specific key will let you through the door. I flipping love that analogy. I thought that five minutes ago, but it's so true. If you start off with a four to one daiquiri you, and you don't like it, you might sort of give the cocktail a miss. But then if you try a four to two, you'll be like, oh wow, that's what it's all about. But as your palate goes on, like me, you probably get to more rum focus. So I went from a four to one to a five to one and a half. So more booze and slightly a little bit of sugar just to call a little bit of extra sugar to balance the line. Now you loyal fans, you fans that tune in week after week will know that I'm a big white rum daiquiri devotee. Yes, I'll admit aged dark rums can work in a daiquiri, but they just don't float my boat. My heart truly belongs to white or light aged rums. Now to get into all this, this mini series will be broken down into what I think are easy to understand categories. Probably not super accurate when it comes to talking about rum and rum categories and groupings, but I think these categories or groupings, whatever you want to call them, I think these are going to be more relatable to a lot of you. So let's crack on with part one. And in part one, this video, I'm going to be focusing on 10, 10, yep, 10 English styles of rum, but they are going to be broken down into three subcategories. So the first subcategory of English style rums I've gone for are probably, it's a little bit hard to explain this, but it will all become apparent once you see the follow-up categories and the next video. Uh, kind of single origin, if that's the way to describe it. I'll basically run through it in, and I've got these in price order as well, and I'll go cheapest to more, most expensive. So Angostura three-year-old from Trinidad um, in there, and it's coming in at, well, I've got the prices up here, 19.95. It is a 37.5% rum. Uh, next up, we've got El Dorado three-year-old, £22.90. Uh, then we've got, so that's Guyana, uh, so Trinidad, Guyana. Then we've got St. Lucia. We've got Chairman's Reserve. Now, this is the 43% ABV. And big shout out to Wendy in my Discord, uh, my membership group. I didn't even realise there was a 40% ABV version. Uh, so there is, but this is the 43% ABV version. Uh, and this is £25 on the dot. Um, so that's St. Lucia. We've then got Dawley's. This is the 47%. There's no point me doing the 40% in here because I did that a couple of weeks ago and this one hands down uh, in the side-by-side -side comparison. So there's no point me even putting the Dawley's three-year-old in this. I went straight for the 47, uh, sorry, the 40% ABV. I went straight for the 47% ABV. This is Barbados and this is £27.90. And then we've got Montagna. US, Colorado, this is coming in, this is the most expensive one, it's coming in at £34. So almost £14 more expensive than that, and almost a tenner more expensive than that. Now, uh, I've already done a taste, what I've got in here, little uh, neat sort of nips, and we've got the daiquiris all prepped up. I've already done the tasting, I'm gonna give you my thoughts. 
instance, so let's go through neat first. This isn't a neat run video, this is a daiquiri video, so I'm gonna skip through this. Uh, the Angostura, 37.5%, bit wishy-washy, to be honest. Um, and I went, I did taste that way, so it was the last one I tasted, and after I tasted these, bearing in mind 40, 47%, 43%, when I got down to that, yeah. Yeah, a bit wishy-washy in that sense. Um, the Eldorado three-year-old, again, I've said it time and time again, not my favorite white rum. It's got the coffee and the chocolate notes, which I actually want from an aged rum, not a light sort of unaged or three-year-old, a light white rum, essentially. Um, again, decent. It's going to have some lovers, just not for me. We get up to these three, though. These are a whole different ball game. Lovely, creamy, um, sort of mouthfeel, tropical notes in this. Uh, the big two tropical ones are these. So you get the sort of fruity, the pineapple, the the, um, the passion, not passion fruit, what's the word I'm looking for? Guava notes in there, mango notes um, and all that in there, but big sort of uh, pineapple coming through. Love these, neat, love them, love them. That's a little bit different. That is, as far as I'm aware, slightly sweetened with honey. Um, I think the white one, I know the, I'm sure the Oro one is, but I think that might be as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's still got that luscious sort of mouthfeel to it, that creaminess, but doesn't really have the tropical fruit to that. But I still prefer that over these three. So that's a neat. So daiquiri wise, do you know what? I would not send any of those daiquiris back. They are lovely. And for me, even the Angostura, which I am gonna put in last place, even that for me still comes above some of the aged daiquiris that I've tried. It's light, it's fruity, it's crisp. It is a great, great daiquiri, but it is lacking. So my star of the show in this bit, um, and I've, I've scored these out of 100. Uh, because otherwise I'd get into like 9.5s or 8.5s and something like that. So I've just gone a hundred, scored these out of 100. And price has come into a factor for here. So let's get these out of the way first. 72 out of 100, that was bumped up by being quite cheap. If I was just tasting it on the, da on the rum and the daiquiri alone, probably mid-60s. But because it's under 20 quid, um, it deserves a slightly higher score, a slightly improved score. So 72. Uh, next up, we went for the Montagna. Uh, 75, I've given that. Uh, that's a decent daiquiri, but brought down by the price because that is expensive. Um, I'll be honest, probably six, seven pounds more than I'd want to pay for that. But a lovely, lovely rum. Okay. Uh, so we get into these, the Eldorado 78, decent price. That's about the benchmark. Um, not really kind of what I want. Just purely on daiquiris, that would have probably been last for me followed by fourth place uh, and then third place, just purely on the daiquiris, but these are bumped up by prices. Um, and then we get onto these two. Do you know what? These two are a class apart. I've scored these both 90. I will uh, I will sort of, uh, quite, what's the word I'm looking for? I will, I will explain why I've scored these both 90s. Daiquiri wise, that for me is the better one. But the price, so that's, because that is 27 pounds, 28 pounds nearly, which is still cheap enough, but still a little bit expensive on the white rum scales. So I've probably shaved a couple of points off that, but it is the better daiquiri. This one is 25 pounds, probably about bang on the money for what I would want to pay for a white rum. And that is pretty decent. So, you know, between those two, that does make the daiquiri, that does, is better at sipping neat. Um, it is punchier, 43%, 47%. If I, for me, the three pounds doesn't really make that much difference. I'm going to buy that one out of the two, but both lovely. So the next grouping we have of the English rums, you might have been thinking in the first one, hang on a minute, where's the Jamaican rums? It's because, well, I've actually got five, but the second part you'll understand why I've got these three separately to the next two. Uh, so I've gone Jamaica, and these are what I would call the underproof Jamaican white rums in this. So again, in price order, cheapest to the most expensive, um, Kingston 62, Appleton's white rum, essentially, 40% ABV. We've got Rum Bar, which is Worthy Parks white rum. Uh, what's the price on this? 20 pounds and 90 pence, 40% ABV as well. I think, yes, 40% ABV, 40% ABV. And then the third one is the um, Duppy Share. 
uh, and Duppy Share. This one is just Jamaican uh, Jamaican rum. And again, I think this is 40, 40% 40 ABV. I think it has to be 40. Well, of course it does. It has to be, well, it could be more. It could be more than 40 coming out of Jamaica, but it has to be 40%. Now, um, as far as I'm aware, even though that, because that does say Jamaican rum on it, uh, these have to be unsweetened as well. So there's no additives or anything gone in there. Again, we've tasted. Um, I've done the daiquiri. I've already got the scores on here. Now, look, in, in full disclosure, I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can in this, but I want to give you my view. I'm not a Jamaican funk kind of person in my daiquiris. I like them tropical, clean, crisp, refreshing. I know that's going to have a lot of fans. I know that. I'm not trying to discount that. It is just not for me. I'm going for the tropical fruitiness as opposed to the Jamaican vibes. And that has got that little bit of sort of overripe banana. I don't want to say, I'm, I'm going to say Jamaican funk. I don't want to say esters, but that has, out of the three, that one has got the Jamaican funk. Whereas these two don't. Appleton is renowned for not having that sort of estery, funky vibe. It has got some of that sort of uh, banana going in, but it has got uh, more of those pineapple notes coming out in their rums and that's where the Kingston 62 sits and very similar uh, but not quite as good in my opinion the Duppy share. So what have I scored these? I've scored the Kingston in first place out of these three it's 80. Uh, 80 out of 100. I've done the rum bar at 76 and I've done the Duppy share at 75. Even though that's not what I one in a daiquiri, I did still enjoy that more than that. It had something to it, uh, something a bit extra. But just to kind of round that off uh, so far, again, so the Kingston 62 would be higher than the El Dorado three-year-old and the Angostura. Okay, so that's currently sitting in sort of fourth place, if you like. Is that right? Uh, no, second, sorry, third place. It's currently sitting in third place after the first sort of five that I did. Um, cheapest chips what is it 80 18 pounds 18 pounds that is the cheapest one out of the eight so far 18 pounds and that's pretty good and these two are rums number nine and ten out of this first video uh, as a gate say this video was more like single origin if you like single distillery um sort of white rum so but we've got the overproof because we can't discount the overproofs all right, from Jamaica. So, but 63, aren't they? 63% ABVs. These, um, <laughs> they're, they're really good. They are really, really good. Perhaps not what I want from a daiquiri, but it depends when you have a daiquiri. If, it's, if you have the daiquiri as the preemptor for having a wild night, then these are going to be right up your street. But if you're having a daiquiri for easy drinking session, kind of sitting around with friends and all that, perhaps not the rums uh, for you. But can I split them? Can There is a subtle difference, and I've noticed this a few times when I'm doing this. My palate does sit firmly with the rum bar. Uh, if I want those sort of Jamaican estuary thing. The Rain Nephew, which is essentially Appleton, Again, well, Rain Nephew is the parent company to Appleton, so I shouldn't say Appleton are technically Rain Nephew, but uh, Appleton versus Worthy Park, essentially, to what you guys would know. Uh, Price-wise, there is a there is a difference on price. Thirty pounds seventy-four. So I've got them in the wrong order. That's the most expensive one. Thirty pounds seventy-four. Twenty-eight pound forty-nine. And I dare say you could probably get that cheaper in supermarkets. I know the overproofs have a lot of fans. Um, they're just not really for me as daiquiri rums, but they are definitely 100% worth trying. Uh, and let me know in the comments below, let me know your opinions uh, of which, you know, do you go underproof Jamaican, do you go overproof Jamaican in your daiquiris? But score wise for these, I did, uh, what did I give? I did go slightly more. Um, and interestingly, my, my first, I didn't even look at the previous results. Uh, I went straight in at 77 and 76. Uh, and to compare those, uh, that is scored slightly higher than the underproof rum bar, and that scored exactly the same as the underproof rum bar. Um, so taste-wise, you know, pretty decent, but 
out of the single origin, single country, single distillery white rums in the English style, has to be that Dawley's uh, three-year-old, that 47, closely followed by the Chairman's Reserve. Now stay tuned for video two, because in the, in the second part of this mini-series, I'm gonna be checking out the blended or multi-island, multi-country English style of rums and rums from the UK.